Guys, uh, this is it. Ryzen is here. I'm wearing the t-shirt and everything. We've been waiting patiently. Well, some of us have. It's hard when the leaks are flying like a flock of panicking geese. But whether you've been bad or good, jolly old Saint Ryzen is here to fill your stocking with multi-threaded performance and to fill Intel's stocking with coal. <laughs> And though that joke would have been much better a few months ago, that's actually true this time, as AMD has come out with its first real competition to Intel in high-end in many, many years. Now, our good buddy Brad from AMD was able to get us a Ryzen 7 1700X for this video. Thank you so much, Brad. You're the best. It's not the flagship 1800X, but it's a step up from the 1700. And as you'll see when we get to the benchmarks, there's certainly a case to be made for its greatness. But enough preamble. To the intro. So by now you've probably seen the info about those three Ryzen 7 CPUs I mentioned since it was released last week, but here's a quick refresher. The Ryzen 7 1700, 1700X, and 1800X all have 8 cores and 16 threads, which means they're set up right away to have killer multi-threading performance. Base and boost clocks are 3 to 3.7 GHz for the 1700, 3.4 to 3.8 for the 1700X, so that's what we'll be working with, and 3.6 to 4.0 for the 1800X. However, one new feature of these processors is something called extended frequency range, which will push the boost clocks up even higher. Our 1700X actually got up to 3.9 GHz during our testing, and the 1800X is supposed to hit 4.1 GHz as well under heavy load. We're also looking at a TDP of 95 watts for the 1800X and 1700X, with a 65 watt TDP for the 1700, which is impressively lower than Intel's competitors. Now they've all got 20 megabytes of combined L2 and L3 cache. That's 16 megabytes L3, 4 megabytes L2, and they're also all unlocked, just like the entire Ryzen product stack. So when the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3 processors launch later this year, everything will be fully overclockable. That said, the X designation of the 1800X and 1700X do indicate that they've got a bit more headroom to make use of than the non-X versions. But the best part of the whole bit is price. In US dollars, the 1800X is 499 MSRP, the 1700X is 399, and the 1700 is 349. Expect to add one to 200 to those prices in Canadian dollars. But we already knew basically all of that before today, so let's get to the test setup. I benched our 1700X on ASUS's new Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard, which features the flagship X370 chipset. It's got a lot of the awesome features that I talked about in my video on ASUS's new Z270 motherboard, which you can watch by clicking the link in the corner if you so desire. ASUS Aura Sync RGB LED lighting is here, dedicated headers for water cooling pumps and flow monitoring, one-click system-wide overclocking features, and more. We populated the RAM slots with 32GB of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 and used an ASUS Strix GTX 1080 as our GPU to avoid any graphics bottlenecking. But I've been skirting around the new AMD Wraith Max stock cooler with RGB lighting by Cooler Master. This cooler will not come with any of the Ryzen 7 CPUs, you'll have to get it separately, but there are actually going to be two other versions of the Wraith. The slightly smaller Spire, which also has RGB and comes with the 1700 non-X, and the more compact Stealth, which is RGB-less, it doesn't have RGB, and will probably come with some of the lower end parts coming later. I used the same GPU, RAM, and boot drive for our other test setups as well to make sure everything was on a level playing field. So without further ado, the tests. Now I'm going to be straight up with you guys, I did not have a ton of time to do this testing, so I only ran this 1700X against a KB Lake Core i7-7700K and a Broadwell E Core i7-6800K, which are the 1700X's closest competitors in terms of price at $330 and $430 MSRP respectively, although Intel appears to have been shaking in their boots a bit recently and some places have dropped prices for those parts. To test pure CPU performance, I ran Cinebench, CPU-Z, and our Handbrake 4K encoding test. As expected, the 7700K did outperform both the 1700X and the 6800K in single-threaded workloads, as it has half the cores and threads with a boost clock of 4.5 GHz. However, in those single-threaded tests, the 1700X consistently beat the 1600K, apart with 6 cores and 12 threads, but that's $30 more expensive and with a much higher TDP of 100 40 watts. The story between those two parts is much the same for the multi-threaded tests, 
Except that the Ryzen 1700X just destroys the 7700K, with the 6800K falling somewhere in between, but closer to the 7700K's performance than the 1700X. This is probably where we see the best value proposition for Ryzen in multi-threading. It easily beats the more expensive 6800K in multi-threading, and may even give the 6900K a run for its money in some scenarios. Okay, so the 1700X is a multi-threading beast, but what about gaming? Well, this is where the 7700K continues to shine, at least in the tests I ran. Keep in mind, all of these were at 4K. In Overwatch at Ultra settings, the 1700X actually beat the 7700K by a few FPS, but it was the opposite in GTA 5 and Ashes of the Singularity at the Extreme preset, both in DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. Although it is worth noting that in the jump from DX11 to DX12, Ryzen got an over 10 FPS boost, while KB Lake only went up 2 FPS. So, DX12 games may see a bigger benefit with Ryzen, and keep in mind those gaming numbers for Ryzen in these tests aren't that bad either. Now, as you can see, I didn't test with a ton of games, but you can probably get a more complete picture of Ryzen's gaming performance specifically from the dozens of other Ryzen reviews that went up today. Now, you also may have noticed that I didn't overclock at all, and that's because A, Unfortunately, that was another thing lost due to time, and B, I'd like to do a Ryzen overclocking guide sometime in the future, so I want to turn that into a whole video by itself. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. What I think I can conclude based on my testing is that AMD is back. Ryzen is incredibly competitive, especially at its current price to performance ratio, and if nothing else, they've lit a fire under Intel's butt. I think we all know Intel's kind of been sitting pretty up there at the top of the enthusiast hierarchy, but oh, whoops, here comes Ryzen to bring them back down to earth, and I think that's what we're seeing here. So nice job, AMD. Now, of course, as you saw, the 7700K and other single-threaded heavy CPUs, they still make a lot of sense if all you're doing is gaming. But now that AMD has put out super competitively priced parts with blistering multi-threaded performance, if you're video editing, or running virtual machines, or doing some extreme multitasking, or gaming and streaming at the same time, which is one of the most compelling demos I saw of Ryzen before launch, then you'd do well to consider one of these new chips, rather than forking over more money for a lower performing part. We may be doing a Ryzen livestream soon, and I think we're going to be gaming and streaming on the same system, so we'll see how that goes. Of course, if you are interested in picking up a Ryzen 7 CPU, they are available, along with many other wonderful things. At ncix.com, click the I in the corner there, or the link in the description for details on that. And that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Click over here for previous videos. Check us out on Twitter or down there. But as always, like the video if you liked it. Comment below for fans with benefits. And subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Fun fact, it's 10.35 on Wednesday night. So now I'm going to edit this sucker. Wish me luck. I'll see you real soon.